receive the word of God this morning. I ask you to let us sit on the edge of our seat, ready to receive the word this morning. I ask it, Lord, through the authority of Jesus' name, and every believer say amen. You may be seated here in the presence of the Lord. Sister Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1, if you don't mind. In Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1, It says in talking about Jesus and when he had called unto him his 12 disciples he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases Judas was a part of the 12 here I want you to think about that. Judas, when the Bible said that Jesus called the 12, Judas is a part of the 12 in this portion of Scripture. And it tells us that Judas had a call of God upon his life. Jesus called him. He was, he was called by the Lord. I don't know if you've ever thought about Judas like that, but... Amen. He was more than just the betrayer of the Lord. He didn't start off that way. He didn't start off as the betrayer. He started off as one of the twelve with the call of God upon his life. We know that Judas had an anointing upon his life because in this portion of scripture it says that he went out and he healed the sick. Jesus gave Judas, he gave the twelve an anointing. To go and heal their Judas had an anointing of God on his life to, to heal the sick. Judas cast out demons. Judas preached the good news of the kingdom. I mean, when we read the the the, the story of Judas and you see the word Judas, usually it always says the one who portrayed the Lord. And I don't want to get off track, and I don't, I don't want to get ahead of myself. But I think that's an injustice because Judas isn't the only one who betrayed the Lord. Peter betrayed the Lord too. He denied the Lord. But anytime I read the name Peter, I see, I see rock, the rock, Simon Peter. The called one, the chosen one. I don't see where he has the definition beside his name that he betrayed the Lord, yet he betrayed the Lord. In fact, they all betrayed the Lord. The only difference between Judas and the rest of them is Judas never got back up. You will only be labeled by your failure when you stay in your failure. Hello, can I get a witness? And I want you to know the devil wants to label you by your mistakes and your failures this morning. But Jesus has come that you can get back up. Someone say amen to that. Judas didn't start off as the portrayer. He started off with the call of God on his life, with an anointing upon his life. He was an apostle. That word apostle means sent one. I mean, he wasn't just a disciple. He wasn't just a follower. He was one of the 12 apostles chosen, handpicked by the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only did Judas perform miracles according to Matthew 10 1 remember he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases Judas was a part of this ministry but not only did he perform miracles he saw miracles he saw Jesus heal the lame man and he watched the lame man walk he walked uh, he watched Jesus walk on water I want you to think about this had a call of God on his life, an anointing, authority over demons, praying for the sick and they're being healed, preaching the good news of the gospel. Amen. Are you hearing me? And then he was a part of the ministry of the Lord Jesus. He, he watched Jesus walk on water. He watched Jesus feed 5,000, not counting men and women, or not counting the women and the children, with a few loaves and a few fish. He was a part of this. He's seen this. He saw Jesus raise the widow's son from the dead. 
Remember the funeral possession and Jesus stopped the whole funeral possession. And, and he raised that boy from the dead for that little widow woman. He, Judas was there when Lazarus came hopping out of the grave. Are you hearing what I'm telling you this morning? Judas did not start off as the betrayer. He started off as a man anointed and operating in the ministry. Amen. Had a call of God upon his life. Had tremendous, wonderful experiences with the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet the Bible said he ended up choking to death. Can you imagine that this morning? A man like Judas, after everything that he had been a part of, after everything that he saw, after everything he was he participated in, how could a man like Judas choke to death? How could he choke to death? And my question to this this morning, and the thing that I've come to ask us to do an inspection on is could it be that I'm choking this morning could it be that you're choking this morning and I'm not talking about physically I'm talking about spiritually and I want you to hear me please pull up here this morning the Bible said that in the last days there will be perilous times that word perilous means that an atmosphere set to weaken listen we are in the hardest time the church has ever been in I'm just telling, look, look up, the, we're in the hardest time right now that the church has ever been in. And we've got to have a fight and a determination that we're going to serve the Lord Jesus Christ to the very end. You got to make up your mind right now. Nothing's going to turn me around. Nothing's going to cause me to quit. You can't get me mad enough. I'm not going to get upset. I'm not going to get discouraged. Amen. I've got my mind made up. Come hell or high water, I'm going to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And there are things that can happen in our life. Amen. That will choke out our faith. Is your faith choking this morning? Is your desire for God being choked this morning? Is your passion for the house of God being choked this morning? That word choke, it means to, uh, choke to death means by compressing the throat with something such as a hand or a rope to ob obstruct seriously or fatally the normal breathing of a person. There are things that can happen that will choke your faith, choke your passion, Choke your desire for the things of God. And I want you to hear me. It doesn't happen in here. It's what's going on outside the building if you're not careful. Can I get a witness? We know scripturally that a person can choke to death spiritually. In Matthew 13, 22. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word. Watch this. And the care of this world... And the deceitfulness of riches choke. Somebody say that with me. Choke. Choke the word. And he becometh unfruitful. He got choked out. He received it. He started off right. He received the word of God. But something came in that choked it out. It began to squeeze. It was a, a slow process. But eventually it choked it out ezekiel 37 talks about the valley of dry bones remember the prophet he looked down and he seen them valley of dry bones and what did he say they're very dry they got choked out they didn't they they, they, this, they weren't like this physically it was spiritually they were very dry bones in the valley of dry bones i want you to hear your pastor this morning i want you to hear this preacher there are things that can happen in your life that will choke your desire for the things of God. There are things that will weigh on you and make it hard to live for God. And, and I've come to preach to you, and I, I want you to hear me. I come with a burden this morning. I, I really do. My heart is heavy this morning. I feel like being a pastor. I want to be a watchman this morning. I come in a great spirit, a great attitude. Everything is good, but I come with a burden this morning. Because I feel like some of you are living in a place of resistance in your walk with God that you don't have to live there. You're fighting battles that you shouldn't have to fight. You're struggling with things that you shouldn't have to struggle with. And I'm just telling you, there's a place in the Lord where, and I, listen to me, I'm not saying you ever get beyond the struggle. Amen. Because there's a fight to this thing. 
But there's also a fight that gets so great, it's greater than your strength and your power, and it begins to choke you out, and it begins to weigh you down, and you get discouraged, and you lose your passion, you lose your fire, and all of a sudden that old devil comes in and says, well, you might as well quit, you might as well throw in the towel, you can't do it anyway. Listen, I come to rebuke that off this morning, and I'm believing for the Holy Ghost to resuscitate you, give you the Heimlich removal, or, or the, the Heimlich uh, uh um, whatever it's called and bring that thing out where you can breathe again freely in your spirit it's the will hey Zach can you bring me that branch over there real quick oh no bring the grandbaby if you don't bring the branch bring the grandbaby oh you're such a good baby I, I want you to check this out I uh my wife had me do some yard work. When did we cut this off? Was it Friday? It's raining. I know that. It's Friday. I, I had this in the back of my truck. I drove to work uh, Saturday. I came home. Um, it's Sunday morning. And look at, I mean, the leaves are still on this thing. You wouldn't even know that this thing was drying up, that it had been cut off, that it was dying. You, you, you wouldn't know that the life was, I mean, it, this thing looks just like it did when it was in the tree. Are you hearing me? And I think that what happens sometimes is that when, when we begin to choke, people don't realize they're choking. They don't realize they're losing their strength because they, they, it's a slow process. It's a slow death. I mean, most people don't just wake up and say, okay, I'm leaving the church. Somewhere they get cut off from the life-giving anointing of the Spirit of God. They begin to, there's a restriction. I, I remember uh, Jensen Franklin preaching a message about the spirit of the python. How it slowly begins to squeeze and squeeze the life out of you. And I'm just telling you, there's things out there that will squeeze your desire. It'll squeeze your passion. It'll squeeze your ability ability to breathe spiritually and then all of a sudden this weight gets so heavy that I don't know if I can do it I don't know if I can go to the house of God I don't feel like praising God can I tell you that's not the will of God it's time to rise up and in the Holy Ghost come on give him a shout of praise in the privacy of our own heart in the privacy of your own heart. Some of us know we're choking. You know you're choking. And as a pastor, I can't let you choke another service. What happened to the young man that testified this morning is a slow choke. It's a slow choke. And this morning, I've come and I, I, I pray for the Holy Ghost help us this morning to put a Heimlich maneuver on us and on your spirit and on your heart. Amen, that a fresh fire will come, a fresh determination will come, and you'll shake some stuff off and the things that's been weighing you down and discouraging you. Amen, that the Lord would put the enemy underneath your foot this morning and, and you would be the head and not the tail. You'd have victory coming in and going out. Listen to me. It's not the will of God for you to struggle. It's not the will of God for you to be on life support. It's the will of God for you to have victory, to be an overcomer through the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, give him praise this morning. Well, let me ask you something, and, and I'm going to try to get through this. What caused Judas to choke? Because he, he choked spiritually before he ever hanged himself. Uh, he did, no... His brother had the call of God anointing on him and 
working in the ministry, coming to church, praising God. Something happened. And when I look at Judas, one of the things that I see Judas, the first thing that I notice is that Judas became critical. He got a critical spirit on him. Now I want you to hear this. Do you remember when Mary brought that ointment of spikenard to anoint the body of Jesus? Remember that story? And it, it was costly. And she anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the whole house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Remember the story? Judas was there. And the Bible said that when Judas Iscariot saw this, he said, why was this not sold and given to the poor? So Judas is furious that Mary had come in and anointed the body of Jesus with this expensive ointment. He's sitting there and he's criticizing her worship. He's criticizing the Lord Jesus. He's more focused on the, on the, in fact, if you read the scripture, the Bible said he really wasn't worried about the, the ointment, that he was a thief and that he could get his hand in the money. If you read the rest of the scripture, he began to choke when he began to get a critical spirit. Now I want you to, I want you to pull up here this morning. When you get a critical spirit, you're going to find fault in everything. You're going to find fault in the preacher, preacher's wife, find, find fault in the church. Worship service, the sermon, you, you, you just, you begin to critique everything. You find faults in everything. And I want you to hear me this morning. You will find what you're looking for. If you're looking for faults this morning, get your notepad out. I'm full of them. This church is full of them. But I give you a word. If you come to find Jesus this morning, you will find Jesus in this house. It all depends on what you're looking at. It all depends on what's in your spirit and what you're going after. Are you hearing me this morning? I think it's remarkable. I do. I think it's remarkable that the, the church that you loved, you now criticize. The thing that you used to love, you now find fault in. It's not the church. It's not the worship. It's not the preacher. Because I'm getting better as a preacher. You know, I'm kidding. It's none of that. It's not the people. Something has happened in your spirit. And the devil is trying to choke your joy and your faith and your determination. He wants you to get to believe that you don't need the church and you can do this without the church. I'm telling you, the enemy's trying to choke you out, but I come in the name of Jesus. I pray you get the spirit of faith in you, the spirit of joy in you, the spirit of victory in you. I pray, get up out of that mess. Oh, somebody say glory. Another reason Judas was choking to death. Listen to me. Begin to run with the wrong crowd. <sighs> the Bible said that then one of the twelve called Judas Iscariot went unto the chief priest to figure out how he could betray the Lord. I want you to hear this. When he went to see the chief priest, he had to separate from Peter and John. He, he didn't go... He didn't go with the church people. He didn't go with his brother in the Lord. He didn't go with his sister in the Lord. He had to separate from them. He didn't go with Jesus. Hello? When he began to break fellowship with the church and begin to run with the high priest and the people who weren't in the church, that's when he began to choke. Let me ask you something. The Valley of Dry Bones were worth eight. They were in the valley. All of them were in the valley. Birds of a feather flock together. Are you hearing me? Your friends can choke you spiritually. The people you run with outside of church, listen to me. They can weigh you down. That spirit gets on you. All of a sudden, you don't even realize what's going on. You still got your leaves. You still know how to praise the Lord. But something is happening on the inside. I don't feel the same towards God. I don't feel the same the way towards the house of God. Why? Something is trying to choke your spirit. That atmosphere. There are certain atmospheres that choke your desire to live for God. Are you hearing what I'm telling you this morning? I, th I think about... Not that I'm the example. 
Uh, but we have been here for about 30 years. 27, 28 years. Hello. I'm not saying I've never fallen, never made a mistake. I'm pretty close to perfect, but you know. I'm... <laughs> Someone say amen. But when I, I look back on my life, if it wasn't for that woman right there, I, I'd, I'd just be honest with you, I don't think I'd ever made it. I mean, back in the day, way back in the day, she didn't do the things I was doing. When I'd ask her, I'd say, hey, you want to go do such and such? She said, nah. And so I had a choice. I either take her home or go with the boys. Well, what kind of dummy do you think I am? That wasn't a hard choice. I mean, the Lord knew what I needed. He said, okay, I'm going to put this pretty girl right here, and you're going to have to choose between the two. I'm, I mean, it wasn't a hard choice. But listen to me. She brought me out of the atmosphere. I quit running with that dope atmosphere, and I wasn't in the atmosphere of weed anymore, and I wasn't at, I wasn't, it separated me from the atmosphere of darkness. And, and it wasn't about self-righteousness or better than anybody else. Oh, no. I needed an atmosphere that my faith could grow and my desire for God could grow. And, and can I just be honest with you? It's been several years now. But listen to this, Pastor. I don't want to go back into that atmosphere because I don't want anything to weigh down my spirit and my desire to live for the Lord. Oh, God. Hear your pastor this morning. If you're running with something out there that's weighing you down, it's time to break that fellowship. It's time to break that fellowship. Jesus is about to come. Come on, give him a shout of praise. Are you here, your preacher this morning? Are you here, your pastor? I'm just, I, 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 Lord, help me. You can't do it your way. I know you think you can. I've been doing this a long time. And you, you may think you're on the matrix, the chosen one, where you can just do what you want to do and ain't nothing going to affect you. Listen to me. It don't work like that. How's your desire for the Lord this morning? Don't answer. How's your desire for church this morning? Don't answer. How's your prayer life? How's your praise this morning? How do you feel on a Tuesday afternoon? How do you feel on a Thursday morning? I know I know. we're all here at church this morning, but it's not what's happening here that's choking me, choking you, choking anybody. It's what's happening outside the building. And I want to look, okay, how do I feel Friday? Amen. I want to feel Friday like I feel this morning. I want to feel Monday afternoon like I feel this morning. Come on, can I get a witness? I want to go to heaven. I want to praise God. I love the house of God. I love the word of God. I don't want to wake up Tuesday morning thinking, man, no, no, no. Let's break that atmosphere, break that fellowship. Let's be around things that encourages us, strengthens us. Come on, give God some praise on that. I got to move. I got to move. I got to move. Judas got to the place the word didn't affect him and conviction didn't affect him. You can, you can look at it. Got more interested in money than Jesus. You can, you can look at it. So many things. I think the, the, what, out of all of it, as I was meditating on this, the thing that I found so interesting, watch this, Brother Will, is that Judas went and looked for a tree. And then when he found a tree big enough, he went and bought a rope. And then he took the rope and made it into a noose. And then he put the noose over his own head. Now I, can, I can understand if somebody else was doing this to him. He was self-afflicting himself. Put that noose over his head, and then you know what the crazy? He jumped off the tree and hung himself. He choked to death. I just wonder this morning, I just wonder how many things in your life is self-inflicted. 
things that we're choosing to do, choosing to go, things that we're throwing water on the fire, we're throwing, and then we wonder why we're smoldering. Can I tell you, don't throw water on this spiritual fire, throw some gasoline, put another log on the fire. Can I get a witness this morning? I remember, in fact, I got some old videos of me and Scotty and Tony. I don't know if you've seen it. I think I, I got you the video. Uh, we were out little, and Dad had taken us out uh, on the boat. And, and remember how we used to cover up with the sand, and Dad would come up like Frankenstein. All the, anyway, we got that on video, black and white, I think. Tells you how old I am. And, and, but I remember going water skiing as a young boy. And put you in the water and you got your skis on and you're holding on to the rope. And then the force of the boat is trying to pull you up out of that water. Now, uh, hear me. The hardest time for a water skier is when your body's submerged in the water. And that force of the boat is trying to pull you up out of, out of the water and you're being pulled through that water for a little bit. And I want you to know, you can only live in that place for so long. You'll, you, you'll get exhausted. You'll wear out. But the more you come up out of the water, the easier it gets. Until eventually you're on top of the water. Now you're jumping waves. Hello, somebody. And that's how it is in our life. That if you stay submerged in certain things, you're going to struggle in living for God. You're going to struggle to be faithful to the house of God. You're going to be beat up with condemnation. You're going to be weak. You're going to be discouraged. But the Holy Ghost is wanting to pull you up out of that stuff that you can soar and have a victory and have a freedom, have a liberty in your life. It's time, listen, it's that whatever's pulling you down, it's time to come up out of that. Whatever is choking your faith, it's time to come up out of that. Whatever's weighing you down, it's time to cast it off and come up out of that. How many of you lift your hands to the Lord and love Jesus? I'm, I think I'll land this right here. I think I may just land this right here. Oh, hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Mm, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, uh, you, you know, and when, when I look at, when, brother, we, when I look at people who's got victory, you know, I say victory, people who seem to be doing well in church. The only difference between them and those who are struggling is decisions and choices. It's true because, and it's the choices that they're making outside the building that's determining their level of freedom in their life. It's, it's just true. Are you hearing what I'm telling you this morning? And as your pastor, I don't want you to sit on these pews and be choking and be discouraged and losing your passion and losing your strength and all of a sudden it gets easier to miss church and, and then when you come you can't praise. You're so weighted down, so discouraged and something's choking you and, and if you keep letting it choke you eventually you're going to suffocate and die and, and I'm telling you as your pastor, I want to see you finish strong this morning. I want us to run across that finish line together, amen, saying we've done it for the Lord. I got knocked down, but I got back up. I fought a good fight, but I, oh, I finished my course. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, listen, what did Paul say? He said, everything in your life isn't wrong, but some things are not expedient. They're not good for you. So I want to cast off everything that's going to weigh me down and discourage me, keep me from prayer, keep me from victory. Come on, can I get a win? I want to finish this. Oh, I want to finish this strong. Stand and give him a shout of praise here this morning. I don't know if I'm finished or not, but can you give God a shout of praise? Come on, give him a shout of praise. Come on, give him a shout of praise. <laughs> oh, you know, just remain standing. But when I look at Judas, I never see Judas praying. 
I don't. I don't see Judas praying. The people that I look at as a pastor and say, you know what? They're treading above the water. It's people who have a prayer life. The trick, because I'm just telling you, when I don't pray, I get sticky. I get mad. Things stick to me. I get angry. I get bitter. I, well, don't look at me like that. Some of you cuss. Well, don't get quiet on me now. I'll call you out. Hello. We all, we all, can I just say this without being disrespectful? Maybe this ain't the right word, but. I want to use the word stupid. Can I use the word stupid? Sish par? She said no. All right, we all crazy. <laughs> without prayer, without the Lord. And so when I look at people, Judas didn't have a prayer life. Hello, he wasn't, no, he wasn't on the mountain praying. Glory to God. And I'm just telling you as your pastor, the hour that we're in, Sunday to Sunday is not enough. That's why we do have Wednesday night Bible study, but I'm not going to get on that there. I mean, but Sunday to Sunday's not enough. I got, listen, I got to pray every day. And, and, and you do it however you want. I'm just telling you as your pastor, people who's walking on the water, they got a prayer life. The word Judas, it, it comes from the word Judah. It means praise. Not one time do I find Judas ever giving God praise. His name means praise, but he wasn't a praiser. People who's kind of come up out of the water and now they're floating. I want to go water skiing. I wonder if we can still do that. You think you can water ski, Scotty? He ain't listening. I mean, I, th I, would, I, th I, think, I think I might want to try it. People who are up out of the water are people who come into church and they don't sit back. And I'm not. I'm, I'm just telling you from a watchman on the wall, because I want to see you make it. I want to see you be strong. I want to see you be victorious. But you can't just come and plop on a pew. You got to give God some praise. You got to lift your hands. You got to lift your voice. You got to. You, you come to some. Oh God, you got to help me. I got to quit. Get ready, Zach. Get ready. Get ready. I got to quit. I'm gonna get in trouble. But some people used to come early for pre-service prayer. Uh oh. I'm just telling you, as the watchman, I'm saying, okay, Lord, what are the things that help me stay in victory? Prayer, the house of God, praise, the word of God. It's pretty simple. The hardest time for an airplane is when it's taken off. The gravity's pulling it down, the air's trying to pull it up, and it's shaking. That's a scary time. That's when you're praying. Hello. I mean, it's shaking. But the more it lifts into the air, the easier it gets. And I've come with a burden on my heart to tell you, brother, to tell you, sister, amen, that if you lift up a little bit farther, amen, from that gravity, from the world, from sin, amen, it will, your boat won't be, your plane won't be shaking like this. It begins to level off and you find a joy, you find a peace, you find an excitement in serving the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't want to be getting weaker. I want to get stronger. I don't want to get weaker. I want to get stronger. I don't want to get weaker. I want to get stronger. Somebody say amen. How many of you will lift your hearts to the Lord this morning? Will you lift your hands all over the building? Brother Shelton, if you don't mind, can you come and amen, strum the guitar for me? And Regina, if you guys want to come for a moment and amen, we'll just... I'm not for sure what we'll pray or, or play, but amen. Come on, lift your heart to the Lord. Lift your heart to the Lord. I'm just telling you now, when, when Judas separated from Peter and John and Jesus and the rest and went to visit that high priest, it tells me the enemy wants to separate me from the people of God, separate me from the house of God. Why? Because when we're together, we're stronger together than if I'm separated. We, uh, listen, I'm stronger when I'm with you than I am when I'm by myself. Well, a, listen, a three cord is not easily broken, and we got more than that here this morning. Amen. Come on, we're better, we're stronger when we're together than when we're separated.
Listen to me and I'm finished. I'm asking you as your pastor. And it, just, just let me preach and let it fall where it's going to fall. Man, d- don't miss church. Don't, don't, don't miss church. Now, I'm not talking about if you're working. But don't just choose because I'm tired. Don't make excuses. Don't. Some things we can't help, and that's cool, and that's a part of life. But, oh, God, I never want to get into the place where I can't even make it through the doors. That I lose the desire for the house of God. What did David say? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I want that spirit in me. How about you, church? Oh, God, put that in me. Revive that in me. I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. I want to come in shouting. I want to come in dancing. I want to come in and then excited and giving God praise. Hallelujah. And that's not just for a select few. That's for everybody. I said it's for everybody. Just get above the gravity a little bit more and you'll have smooth sailing. How many of you this morning would be willing to walk down with pastor and say, Lord, I I just, I want to walk in that level where there's more victory, more peace, more joy, more anointing, just... Amen. And the things that are weighing me down, Lord, I want to rise above that in the name of Jesus. Amen. This is no time to be discouraged. This is no time to be weighted down. Come on. It's time to empty out the airplane of all unnecessary things. Come on. Can I get a witness? Amen. Remember when that storm hit and they thought they was going to go under and and they begin to cast things off that boat. Man, we got to stay afloat. We got to stay afloat. That's how I feel right now. 2021 with everything going in in the world. I need to cast off all the unnecessary stuff. Why? My boat has got to stay afloat. Oh, glory. This is no time to sink. This is no time to go under. Amen. Let's get rid of all the unnecessary stuff. Come on, lift your hands to the Lord. And just you and Jesus, just you and the Lord. Brother Shelton, if we could sing a song here, just whatever you feel, and and then we'll give the people an opportunity to pray just for a moment. Are you helping me pray, church? I just can't imagine anyone, amen, not praying right now and reaching out to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, just worship the Lord. Let renewal come. Let the strength of the Lord come. Come on, let the strength of the Lord come. Let the strength of the Lord come. Oh, that's it. Come on, if you're physically able, just come stick with us. Come on. Come on, if you feel it, come on. Oh, that's it. Sing that, Elder. Sing that. Sing that. 